right, we got a game. All right, we got a second game here. Got some another uh, unknown opponent. I assume right. you don't know this guy. No, no idea. Does Probably not, some sicko with a new name. As I say, does not have the. Uh, He's default fun. avatar, so okay, avatar, well, so he's probably ready. Yeah. This guy is playing the highest stakes at WSOP.com, so we can assume he's the best. This is high stakes poker. High stakes. All right, we're going to start the same way last time, min-raising and playing pretty straightforward, a little tighter out of position maybe, um, only because, you know, we have an assumption about these guys that are going to make a lot of mistakes out of position most likely. So, do the sites track uh, World Series of Poker yet? Sharkscope? Um, Sharkscope, I know, does not track it. The in software tracking seems shady, sh shaky at best. It okay. doesn't seem like a very good. Uh... Actually, I'm just going to check call here. I was going to check rates, I'm going to check call and just see how he. Probably... That's an interesting thing. Yeah, it really is. Um, <laughs> against this guy, I might just fall to two barrels. Yeah. I would say it's like a, uh, it's a good uh, and a bad turn. I feel like I want to turn my hand into a bluff sometimes if he's going to fold a jack. But that might be like overthinking the mistakes a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Because I think he just checks I, yeah. back a jack. And, yeah. I feel like if you bet there, he just like, if I have a jack, I'm yeah. calling. Check, check, bet, check. I see. Now I want to call him. Like, what kind of line is that? Bet's flop, checks back, turn. Flush gets thrown over and he bets, so I'm just going to, I guess I'm going to look him up and see. He has to say, besides a flush, I can't see what he has a flush. But he's, I, think I, he's, he's, I, just, I couldn't say it to you called, but yeah. I, I, I don't <laughs> think he's really. I no, I agree there. He's his range there. I think he's either got a flush or a bluff. bluff. Yeah, I agreed, and I would have called the same way. I think that's a spot where, you know, it may end up being wrong against a specific guy, but the information you had in that situation, I think, leads you to call. Yeah, plus, I mean, with how slow the structure is, too, I mean, that's kind of useful information. He didn't two-barrel a flush draw on any sideboard, which I think is kind of significant. But he's been passive with some value hands that people usually, you know, yeah, okay. not only that, but he turned a gut shot on the turn as well. So he turned like mm -hmm. the world essentially, and he didn't drill it. So uh, that gives us a lot of information about his two barrel range. Yep. Okay, three bet. Um, I'm keeping the three bet side. I mean, I, to be honest, I should actually probably, if I'm three betting tight versus guys, I should probably be three probably betting larger. larger yeah. But uh, I'm kind of like still stuck on the whole. <laughs> Instinctively, you know, just keeping the balance. Yeah, Here. it's a little weird to be 100 big blinds deep in a turbo. Here, maybe I'll just keep the balance. Maybe I'll three bet this one. So let's do that. <laughs> See if he gets tired of it after two. Just to mix it up. Bet once. Uh, bet 100. See if he, if he does the matter. Oh, come on, it's not that fishy. No, I just hate the timing. Waiting a long time, and you're second three bet. Yeah, I know. But and I'm then like, betting I'm... smaller. <laughs> it just, it, it, you guys I, can imagine the I setup can we it. have here. I have to, like, reach across to hand type a bet. <laughs> yeah, we're in a uh, private studio room in the ARIA conference business center or something. In Vegas, yes. Vegas. Uh, I'm still playing two barrel. If he raises, I probably fold. I think that seems fair. This guy doesn't seem aggressive so far. I mean, he could end up being like one of those guys that just bets for value or bluffs. Ooh, now that's, I was planning on checking back all rivers. I thought it would be too thin, but on this river, I yeah. actually think I can get away with a small value bet, like 120, like for sure. a seven. Um, the problem is my kicker with the eight doesn't play that well, but um, let's see how light he's willing to call. Sure. Here. I mean, he's, he's kind of looking up with a seven. And then you also might, go. yeah, you also, can you see muck pans in this? Yes. Um, let me pull it up and try and bring it over. Jack seven. He shows yeah, Jack Seven. Jack Seven. Yes, yeah, he has, so he Jack has seven. seven right yeah, there. so he had the yeah. seven. Nice. I was gonna say another advantage of betting small there is um, you've been sort of aggressive in his mind, perhaps. So he might decide to bluff you there. Like if he raises that river, I don't know how you can pull the most. Yeah, it's a pretty <laughs> gross spot for him to raise on the river unless he had like a straight draw on the flop that included a ten, and he decided to just check raise all the way. Um, I'm going to bet bigger. I've been playing, this is my third three bet, so he might play back at me, which would be unfortunate because I'm going to afford the best hand. So basically, so far, you're just kind of running over this guy a little bit. Yeah, um, it does feel that way. I mean, you lost a big pot and you're still winning by a decent bit now. You know? Yeah. Um, I'm still going to bet the flop. I'm not going to change anything. Yeah. I think. It's good. Super I think, aggressive. Change. I really think uh, now that I've played enough with this guy, I mean, I know it's still a small sample, I really think raising 100% of buttons and C betting near 100% is just going to. You know, without even doing anything else, you can beat the guy, this guy doing that. Yeah, I agree. And then just making, you know, playing uh, semi-cautious mm -hmm. in the swap. Like here, I'm still just, I'm not even going to change my sizing versus this sure. guy. I mean, he's snap folded. He didn't even think about playing back at me. Yep. Uh, I, I'd argue, even though the $10 red guy had 
huge leaks, I'd argue that guy was better than this guy. Oh, I agree completely. This guy's just letting you win a lot of pots. And it's important for people watching, too. Um, even though, you know, Matt said he's going to be raising 100%, C-betting 100% in position, um, you know, there's still going to be some spots where you really have to pay attention to the information you see. And uh, you're going to have to really, you know, read some hands in later streets in certain situations. So we're not just playing like a bot right now. You know, there's still ways to gain extra edge. Wow, now I, like, never win this hand. <laughs> That's fine. Unless he checks. Yeah. Well, he, yeah, we all, I also remember he did play his draws very aggressively, yeah. too. So just uh -huh. so there's no reason to, like, hero him there while we're crushing him in so many ways. Let's check fold. Maybe he'll check back. Mm -hmm. uh, part of me wants to barrel, barrel, but... I think he'll just check down if he misses. Yeah, it's interesting. I wonder what he does with like a six or a seven there. If he bet the turn and the river. Yeah. I, I don't think you should have bet the turn, but I'm just, I'm just curious, really. Yeah. Flopping the nuts makes life easy. Yeah. I'm gonna so, is there any reason to check back there against this guy? So he's kind of um, weak. Yeah, I guess he could. I'm I mean, there's a plus draw and straight draws there, so yeah, it's the wrong. Wow. Yeah, it's now I'm just gonna, man. Against this guy, I almost like he almost always has a hand here. I almost want to raise him, but I guess I'm just gonna call him down. For now, I'm gonna call. See. I think I would have repopped a little bit there. Oh wow! Well, this is gonna be boring now. We're just gonna fool around. <laughs> I would have, yeah. I like to repop a little bit on the flop just because I feel like he's never gonna really fold there. Yeah, I just, I mean, that is the first time yeah. he raised us, so he's basically got eights full here. Because he could just be going crazy. Too, yeah, you know? if he's just decided to make a stand yeah. against us, he may. You know, I still gotta leave the air. Now. There's no reason to raise. He's getting his entire range. In. Mm -hmm. He should be. Anyways. Oh my gosh! Really? So he was bluffing. Yeah. Um, That's right. Yeah. That's just a pilot. <laughs> yeah. Too bad. Too bad. I got a flush. I was evaluating my flush, buddy. Yeah. Come on. He probably can't beat a flush. No, but I mean that's you know. I guess he decided he had enough of. Uh... Sorry, Mike went out, but keep going. Uh, I was gonna say I guess he had enough of uh, me barreling uh, every flop and decided to make a stand when we flop the nuts, which is just to be honest, really unlucky for him, because I'm, I'm making pretty tight folds to him, I think, in that spot just because of how passive he's been. You don't like uh, calling there with uh, nine six offsuit. Uh, out of position. Uh. I mean, it's close. Like I said, I mean, this guy's kind of weak, you know. Yeah, he's just getting run over so much out of position that I'm gonna play uh, pretty tight out of position. I think. Well, now he's opening a lot of buttons too, so I think maybe I'll just. It's one of the uh, benefits of talking and playing at the same time with no HUD. You miss, uh, you miss a lot of tendencies, I think. Sure. Not sure if my mic is in or not. We can't really check, so I'll just talk a little louder in, uh, in case my mic is still out. Yeah. So yeah, one thing against this guy, I don't know, seeing a lot of flops isn't necessarily a bad thing, probably. Um, what do you think about a donkey range against this guy? Um, just in general, not just, not you know, like I said, I, I mean, I, it could be a very profitable spot, but I think I found such a significant flaw in the rest of his game that I haven't really experimented with that yet. Mm -hmm. um, a weird turn card. I think he yeah. just gives up. I mean, we saw that he does the two barrel draws a lot, so. And he gave up the bluff last yeah, time, so I feel like. I've got to value that this. Yeah. I've got to value that this. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, like, even 90 might work. But yeah, he, he pulled it so quick, I think if you bet 60, he would have pulled yeah, it. Yeah, that's I mean, I'm, I, I'm going <laughs> Something like 90 he might just look you up just to say, <laughs> what the heck. Yeah, I'm getting a little. I guess I'm getting a little lazy with my sizing <laughs> right now because of the setup. But yeah. Normally, yeah, normally my sizing would probably be a little different versus this guy. Try the wheel. This is a wheel. Oh yeah, I'll try the wheel. Uh, does that work on like stars or anything? Or yeah, I don't know. It should. I haven't played stars in years, but yeah, it should. <laughs> See, if I track the wheel right now. Uh, no wheel. It might be an option. Oh, look at that! If I click it, it works. All right, so wheel betting works. Um, mix a check raise in here, just to see. I mean. Yeah, I think that's fine. Stab at it. Uh, yeah, I'll probably I'll stab. Yeah, I figure you fold to queen, maybe even king. Plus, so I mean, I've still got my jack in mind. You and you fold, yeah, you fold a bunch of air, too, that yeah. you beat, but it's nicer to steal it in case he steals these, it later. These, these guys may even fold by king high or something. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I think queen high would fold, and king high is definitely a chance to fold. 
Uh, I can't make it 40 without the wheel. Right, 60 is. <laughs> uh, so optimally, I'd probably be betting about one third the pot versus yeah. this guy on the extremely dry boards, wedge boards. I'd probably still bet a little bit more, especially ones that have good runouts. Mm -hmm. um, actually, as his stack size decreases, I'm going to go back to betting smaller. Um, I'm going to actually with, uh, mix in a donk leader just because he can't really raise me without committing his stack. And I mean, he's, and he'd have to have a hand appeal here. So I yeah, he's just holding a lot. I like that. I like yeah, you're active in some of these spots like that. I think that's a great spot to donk lead. Um, and again, I say the reason for that's good because uh, I just realized the blinds are up as well. Um, I'm probably still going to continue min raising even like 10, 11 big C because mm -hmm. has this, I don't even think this guy's three betting a single time. And again, he just runs really unlucky in that spot because I mean, he hasn't been shoving at all. I just wake up faces. <laughs> And that's how, I think that was a, you want a rematch? No, no, that'll be it for us. We got the time. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that was a really good uh, show of how to play against two completely different players. The uh, first one, I uh, pretty much let him run over me early on because he was making such big mistakes with his sizing and bluffing frequencies. And in this particular case, I just kind of ran the guy over. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, those are good matches. Definitely great for players, you know all the way to the bottom levels, the very micro stakes up to probably $30, uh, depending on what site you play. And some of these kind of opponents will show up in the higher stakes too, just at a lower frequency. But uh, yeah, pretty good time. So uh, that's about it. Take care, everyone. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed it.